Now about 10 days ago, I unboxed and got my first look at two versions of the brand new Surface Pro 9. I got the chance to look at the Intel version and of course the one running the SQ3 or the ARM version with 5G. Now both are really nice. There are some differences between the two and we need to pay attention to those differences because it can get quite confusing for the average consumer. We're gonna find out if you should look at these new versions of the Surface Pro 9 or last year's Surface Pro 8, which you can get on sale. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my review of the Surface Pro 9, all new for 2022. Coming up. Now, before we get to the devices themselves, I just want to let everyone know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Microsoft. I'm not being sponsored by Microsoft. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Microsoft is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, these two review units are purchased with my own money. I did not receive any review units from Microsoft. And in fact, they don't even return my emails. Go figure. Now I did an unboxing and first look video on these units, so check out the link in the video description below. I cover a lot of things there pretty much extensively, so check it out, again, link in the description below. Now pricing for the Intel variant starts at $999. If you're in the military or a student or teacher, you get a discount that's $899.99. And if you wanna get the one with the SQ3 and the 5G, that one starts at $1299.99. And keep in mind, these prices do not include any of the accessories, the keyboard cover or the pen. Those are separate and add to the overall cost of the unit. Long before I had a tech review channel here on YouTube, I was a fan first and foremost. Yep, that's me at the 2013 premiere of the Surface Pro device. That's the launch event in Las Vegas. So if I seem a little bit critical of the Surface Pro 9, it's because it comes from a place where I really love this device and I wanted to see it grow and get better. Not because I wanna bash Microsoft or the Surface team for that matter. I just wanted to put that out there. Okay, let's start off with the design and build. And I'm a big fan of the Surface Pro design over the years, it's gotten better. And this is no exception. Now this is pretty much the same form factor as we saw last year. And one of the things is with the elimination of the Surface Pro X, they now have the same form factor, whether you go with the ARM or the Intel, something to be aware of. Now, the difference is, of course, one has a fan, one doesn't, we'll get into that later on. But this all metal build is excellent in terms of the build quality, it's rock solid, and the engineering done on the kickstand is first rate. Really, they have done a great job in terms of the quality and build on these units. Now, both models have a little trap door that allows you to access the SSD for upgradability, which is always great. Now, the one with the 5G needs a SIM ejection tool to get access to that SSD, and these are the small form factor SSDs, a little bit hard to find, of course, not a big surprise. They wanna upsell you on the bigger storage units. And you'll also notice a space for your SIM card. Remember, this is the 5G version, and it also supports eSIM as well. Now, if you go with the Intel version, you don't need a SIM ejection tool. That pops off pretty easily. Just press that indentation and you're ready to go. And I would say these are not the fastest SSD speeds we've seen, but these will be adequate for what you need it to do. This is with the 5G running that SQ3, and these are the results on the Surface Pro 9 Intel that has 256 gigs of SSD storage. And for those wondering, there is no way to upgrade the RAM on either unit, so make sure you get enough RAM for your needs when you do buy these units. Here it is, it shows you how to charge that Slim Pen 2. And this one attaches magnetically, so you can see it here. And let's put these two together side by side. Now to me, the must have accessory or accessories, I should say, is the signature keyboard covers that you see here, along with the Surface Slim Pen 2. These are separate purchases, which add to the overall cost of the unit. Keep that in mind. 
Okay, let's talk about the port selection and we have two USB Type-C ports and they are full function supporting data, charge and display out. Now, if you have the 5G version, that has USB-C 3.2 Gen 2. And if you go with the Intel, that one has USB-C Thunderbolt 4 support and that allows you to connect to external monitors, 4K monitors, even 8K monitor, and of course, docks and the external GPU if you need it. And moving over to the right side is your Surface Connect port. Of course, you could charge on that port, or you can charge on either one of the USB-C ports we just looked at. Notably missing, there's no SD card reader, and they did away with the headphone jack. Now, me personally, that's not a big deal since I've moved exclusively to Bluetooth a couple of years ago, but other people will not be so happy. And I like the move they did where they put the power button now on the top of the unit along with the volume rocker up and down, moving it from the side. That's pretty good. And you'll notice on the 5G version, very strategically placed antenna lines that you don't get on the Intel version. Pretty interesting. Now, one of the best parts of the Surface Pro 9, whether you go with the ARM or the Intel variant, is the display. And we're looking at a 13-inch PixelSense display. It's a PixelSense Flow display. That means it has that dynamic refresh rate up to 120 hertz. What do you get with the 120 hertz refresh rate? Well, the smooth scrolling, the very fluid experience. Now, the one with the Intel variant, of course, does support Dolby Vision IQ. And the one with the 5G or the SQ3 does not. Otherwise, these are are the same displays between the two of them and they're both very bright they both have deep blacks they both have really vibrant colors and it has good color accuracy and there's good coverage of the color gamut now i just did the surface laptop 5 and i thought the display could be better this is much better on either one of these surface pro 9 variants and I'm happy to report that between the two of these, these are both very bright displays averaging about 450 nits of brightness that's excellent now, depending on which color you choose, you'll get the matching wallpaper. That's a nice little touch by Microsoft. And of course, it features a multi-touch display. The responsiveness was excellent. Navigating through the OS with touch is really good on this device. And if you want to take notes or sketch out diagrams or artwork, definitely invest in the Slim Pen 2, a must-have accessory, along with the signature keyboard cover. Now, the pen does have that pen-to-paper feel, thanks to the haptic engine that the Slim Pen 2 features. It actually is a really great note-taking device, and with that pen, it makes it awesome. Now, as far as typing on the type cover, it's really good, actually. The key travel is good. The tactility is good. And when you use it on the raised typing angle, it's pretty sturdy. It doesn't feel as hollow as in years past. So they've done a really good iteration here. They've done a nice improvement over the years on the type cover. So it's a really great accessory turning this into a full-time laptop. That's for sure. And the Precision Touchpad is actually really responsive on this when it comes to two-finger scrolling and doing all the gestures. It worked great. And as I mentioned in the unboxing video, the ARM version is the one with the Windows Studio effects, which gives you auto framing, can blur the background, you can adjust certain settings because of that NPU or the neural processing unit that it has. It has the eye contact, so a lot of extra features on the version with the ARM. It also has the voice focus, which removes any background noise when you're doing a Zoom call or any kind of video conferencing. That's pretty good. Now let's give it a look and a listen. So this is the front-facing camera on the Surface Pro 9. This is the 5G version. But what do you think about the video quality? What do you think about the audio quality? A couple of things to note, this is an IR camera, so you can log in with face recognition with Windows Hello. There is no fingerprint scanner on this, so you'll have to rely on the camera to log in, or you can use your passcode or password. And what do you think about the array mics? What do you think about the audio quality of those mics? Let me know in the comments section below. So this is the front facing camera on the Surface Pro 9 with the Intel processor. Unlike the SQ3 version we just looked at, this does not have that NPU or the neural processing unit. So you're gonna get the new Windows Studio effects that gives you a lot of extra features when it comes to video conferencing, which will help in your Zoom calls and so forth. Unfortunately, you don't get that, but this is still a very good camera. 1080p, of course, this is gonna be great for all your video conferencing needs. But again, if you want a little bit better stuff, look at the ARM variant that I just showed you. And here they are side by side. Let me know in the comments section below, which one do you like better? Do they look pretty much the same? Do you think the NPU makes a big difference? Let me know in that comment section below.
So this is the 4K camera on the rear of the Surface Pro 9. This is the one with 5G with the NPU, by the way. And what do you think about the video quality? What do you think about the audio quality? Let me know in the comment section below. And here's an outdoor shot, again, 4K on this Surface Pro 9. Again, I don't use tablets in general for taking photos or video, but if you're a surveyor, a landscaper, or whatever you might be, this might be something to use. Here you can get a look at my pool, jacuzzi. We're under, still under construction here, but getting there, come a long way on this house. So hopefully it'll come out 100%. And where things get pretty interesting is the performance. And this is where you have to choose very carefully. That's because there's a big difference in performance between the Surface Pro 9 with 5G running that SQ3 and the Surface Pro 9 running the Intel 12th gen processor. As you can see, single core is much better on the Intel. Multi-core performance is much better on the Intel. Overall graphics performance is much better on the Intel. And neither one of these are going to be good for gaming. I would go with something else. These are not what these are designed to do, but for everyday tasks, Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, either one will be fine. Now, one very important thing to note is the Surface Pro 9 running that SQ3 is not compatible with certain applications. I was unable to run the PC Mark 10. I was unable to run the 3D Mark Firestrike and Time Spy tests on that unit. So just something to keep in mind. And if you want to compare it to last year's Surface Pro 8, not much of a big increase here in terms of that Intel year over year between the 11th gen and the 12th gen. In fact, in a few cases, I saw that the Surface Pro 8 actually performed better than this year's Surface Pro 9. Pretty interesting. And for those wondering, here's the performance comparison between the Surface Pro 8 running the 11th gen Intel processor last year and the Surface Pro 9 with the SQ3 for this year. And as you can see, the Surface Pro 8 from last year outperforms the SQ3 for this year. Now, when it comes to the fan noise, only the Intel has any fan noise, obviously, because it has a fan. The ARM version doesn't, and it doesn't go above 34, 35 decibels. Not too bad. Pretty quiet. And as far as surface temperatures, the Intel version never gets overly hot, never too hot to the touch. They did a good job in terms of cooling the Intel variant. And I'm happy to report the ARM version stays relatively cool, despite the fact that it is passively cooled, meaning it doesn't have any fans in it. Again, no fan noise, so you don't have to contend with that. So if you're a productivity person, this is one you may want to look at. Again, silent performance here. That's what you want. No fan noise to contend with. Okay, let's talk battery life. And one of the benefits of going with the Surface Pro 9 with that 5G and that SQ3 processor is supposedly you're gonna get better battery life. And with the numbers I'm seeing here, that is actually true. When I ran that Surface Pro 9 with 5G with 60 Hertz enabled, it did 14 hours and four minutes, which is pretty good. Obviously, it's gonna do better than the Intel. When I put it to 120 Hertz, that SQ3 version did 12 hours and 10 minutes. In it. So actually pretty good in terms of overall battery life, whether or not you go with a high refresh rate or not. Now, as far as the Intel is concerned, when I ran it at 120 hertz, that did nine hours and 16 minutes. And when I did it at a 60 hertz, that's 10 hours and 55 minutes, both decent and both better than the Surface Pro 8. When I ran that last year at 120 hertz, that did eight hours and 46 minutes. The overall takeaway is battery life is actually pretty decent and you'll do better battery life of course with that arm variant with the sq3 so when it comes to charging the 5g model comes with a 39 watt power adapter and the intel comes with a 65 watt power adapter both charge pretty fast now the intel takes about 90 minutes a little bit longer on that sq3 model just something to keep in mind but both pretty fast nonetheless and something else to be aware of the 65 watt that you get with the intel variant does have that extra USB A port to charge peripherals and when it comes to the audio, the Surface Pro 9 sports 2-watt stereo speakers with Dolby Atmos. That means you're going to get the enhanced spatial audio that Dolby Atmos provides. Now, as far as the sound itself is concerned, really loud in terms of the volume. The mids were decent, and there was some bass. Overall, I would say the sound is good on the Surface Pro 9. No complaints in that department. Good to see that. 
Now, for those of you that are going to balk at the price when you include the keyboard cover and the pen with the Surface Pro 9, it can get pretty expensive, especially for what you're getting. You might want to look at an alternative. I took a look at and unboxed the Dell XPS 13 2-in-1 here for 2022. It brings a lot of premium features to the table. Same type of display, although it doesn't have the high refresh rate, 3 to 2 aspect ratio it does have. And it really does bring a lot of value because when you configure it similarly to what we have here, it does come in a little bit cheaper so you may want to check that out but it doesn't have that iconic kickstand that i really love on the surface pro line i'm going to talk more about that in the upcoming full review okay ladies and gentlemen let's bring it all home what do i think about the microsoft surface pro 9 here for 2022 there's a lot to like there are a few things i'm not crazy about let's go over what i like first i love the three to two pixel sense flow display with that dynamic refresh rate up to 120 hertz you can get it on both the 5g model and the intel model both work really well now it does come with that 5g with the sq3 of course you don't get 5g on the intel version i like having 5g if you saw any of my videos you know that and the 5g version also has the windows studio effects adding a few nice features to that really nice 1080p camera that it does have now it does have the upgradable ssd on both units so you can upgrade storage if you need it down the road which is always a plus it's got faster lp ddr5 ram it's got decent speakers that have dolby atmos support helping with the spatial audio and the speakers do fill up the room rather nicely it's got a premium all metal build that has that iconic surface build quality it looks really good and it feels really good in the hands and it's really sturdy it's really good in that regard it's got new colors offered i have the forest green on that intel model but if you get the one with the 5g that only comes in the platinum but there are some things i'm not crazy about the keyboard and pen are sold separately adding to the overall cost of the unit and it can get expensive just two usb ports but on the intel you do get thunderbolt support thunderbolt 4 but you don't get that on the 5g model something to keep in mind big negative here no headphone jack now again i've moved exclusively to bluetooth headphones but a lot of people want wired headphones and you'll have to use an adapter not great no webcam shutter for security and privacy and it really is still not laughable with that surface kickstand so that's another thing you need to be aware of if you want to make this a laptop replacement full time the bottom line is, if you have the Surface Pro 8, there really is no compelling reason here to go to the Surface Pro 9, at least for the Intel version here for 2022. But if you want a Surface Pro device with 5G, then the Surface Pro 9 with that 5G running that SQ3 chip might be a compelling choice. Again, that's a very limited audience and you might have app compatibility issues as I pointed out in this review. So at the end of the day, if you have the Surface Pro 8, I think you're fine, you can get it on sale. I'll leave the latest price pricing in the link below. I don't think you need to go to the Surface Pro 9 here in 2022. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.